Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, I'll show you how I painted my Space Wolves He-Man miniature to a tabletop ready standard using some quick and easy techniques. Here's the model we'll be painting today, and I built him using components from the Grey Hunters box set. And I'll put a link for that in the description below, as well as a list and links of all the paints used, so you can pick those up as well. This He-Man Space Wolf miniature is part of a 3000 point army challenge that I did. So I did a lot of batch painting, and I got him to this stage along with lots of other models. So the first thing I'll show you is how I did that, but I'll just show you the technique I used on a different model. And then once we've got to this stage, we can continue painting him as normal. For this stage, the first thing I did was took some Agrax Earthshade, and this went over the model that's primed in the Mechanica Standard Grey. So I just did one nice generous coat of Agrax Earthshade all over the model. I'm just using the Terminator as an example here. So I made sure to get right in there, in all those crevices, giving it a real nice even coat all over, and then let it dry thoroughly. Then I took some layer Rust Grey, and I got this very vegan makeup brush, which has got some real nice bristles on there. And it's a nice chunky brush. So this is going to make this stage really fast. And because I was doing lots of models at once, this made the job really easy. So I load the brush up. I'm not dry brushing here, but I'm trying to get some of it off on the paper towel there. And then this is going to be like an overbrush method. And I'm trying to just do strokes going from the top to the bottom. So I keep some of that Agrax Earthshade coming through. And it looks a little bit grungy, a little bit dirty. And it's also going to give it a nice shade as well. So it's certainly going to look battle warm with this technique. But the main thing really is speed. I had loads of models, 3000 points altogether. So I wanted a technique that was nice and easy to do that I could get across the whole army pretty fast. So once I'd done one coat, I let it dry, and then I just picked out all the most raised panels that I thought would be a little bit brighter and just gave them a little bit more colour. Again, trying to go from the top to bottom as much as possible, but just hitting those more raised areas. So that's the first stage, and here's the He-Man Space Wolf, and I've done exactly that. Nothing different, exactly that technique with this guy here. So now he's ready to get started with all the other colours. And the first one I use is a base paint called Avalan Sunset. Now this is going to be for the left pauldron, and so I just give a nice coat of this on there. I've watered it down a little bit just to make it nice and easy to put on. And then once that dried, I put a second coat on. So with this paint, I use two coats just to get a nice solid colour across the whole shoulder pauldron. Then I took some base wraithbone paint and I just pick out all the little rune stones that are dotted around. So you've got a couple on there. Also got a fang on the sword as well. So give that a nice even coat. There's some on the back. So really just inspect the model. Make sure you pick out all these little pieces. Then give them a nice coat. We've also got the purity seal at the bottom here. So I'm giving part of that a coat. And also the little skulls that you can see here on the shield. I painted all my heads separately, so this has just got that standard Mechanicus grey, and now I'm going to give it one coat of the wraith bone all over the face and the hair too. Base paint again, lead belcher this time, and this is going to go on the belt buckle, so one coat of that, and we're only going to do one coat of this lead belcher, and then also on this little bit on the chest piece as well. Got almost like a little vent there and you got the straps going across the chest. So that's gonna go on. I chose this piece because it just looks a lot like the bit that goes on the actual He-Man um, figure that you can get from the 80s. And then I used the little uh, metal hoops as well. Gave them a coat of the lead belcher and just picked out the vents on the backpack as well. Then I took another metallic paint, the Rune Lord Brass this time, and then this is just going to be on this decorative piece that goes across the shoulder pad at the top. So give that a nice coat, both sides, all over there, and then I'm also going to pick out just some little details on the sword as well, just on the handle and the very base of the handle there too. Then it's time to go to the contrast paints now, and Volupus Pink, a great colour, real vibrant colour, and this is going to go on the strapping of the handle. So one coat is all we need of this. And then putting this over that standard Mechanicus Grey and Rust Grey means it's not gonna to be too vibrant, it's not gonna be crazy. And then I also use that Volupus Pink over the centerpiece of the vent on the chest. 
Next up, it's Contrast Gore Grunter Fur. And this is going to be for all the fur that you can see on the models. Now, I chose to go with brown uh, throughout the whole army with the furs, or most of them anyway, just because it's a nice colour that goes really well with that bluey rust grey. And I think it works nicely. So one nice coat all over. I'm not flooding it, but I'm putting enough to get in amongst all those different textures that you can see. Then it's time for Contrast Black Templar. I'm going to use this for all the sections here where you've got like the little creases where the legs bend and also where the arms bend too and I'm just moving that model making it nice and easy so I can get in there and use the shape of the brush against the shape of the model and then that works really nicely so yeah not too much paint here I'm not flooding it again just give it a nice coat then it's time for some blood for the blood god a technical paint which has got like a glossy look to it I'm just going to pick out the little gems that a lot of these models have then it's time for Flesh Terrors Red, another contrast, and then this is going to go just on the little seal there at the bottom. So one coat, nice deep rich red. Then a base paint now, Rakarth Flesh. We're going to do some dry brushing. I've just got this nice flat brush, very smooth bristles. I'm going to put a little bit of paint on those brushes, uh, bristles, and then I'm going to work it into some kitchen towel, and then get as much paint as I can off on that kitchen towel so I can give a light dry brush to the fur. This is just going to bring it to life a little bit so it's just not all that same brown colour from the gore grunter fur that we did earlier. So just go against the grain there. Then when that's dry I took some Agrax Earthshade and I just thought I'd dull all that back down a little bit with the Agrax Earthshade just to add some depth and we're going to bring it back to life right at the end with like an icy dry brush with some white so it's going to stand out again later on. So I didn't want it to be too bright but I just wanted to give a bit more attention to the texture and then when I had that Agrax Earthshade I put it on the seal as well. Then I took some Contrast Black Templar again and it's time to give this guy the mark of the crow and so I'm going to put three scratches down the shoulder pad here. So I try and bring this to a nice point at the end of each one and then once I've done that three times I'll spin the model around and then just put some nice neat points on the other end and so this is the kind of mark of all the fighters in my army and the army's all centered around wolves and crows as well as you'll see later on. Next I took some contrast Gilliman flesh and this is going to be for the face so just one nice even coat all over the face there and then that's all there is to it so nice and easy this is great for getting in all that those contours and bringing out all the textures of the model so one coat is all we need. Then it's time for the hair and I went with a contrast Agarus Dunes to give He-Man that nice yellowy golden colour for the hair. Again just one coat being careful not to go over that Gilliman flesh that we've just done and so this is all we're going to do for the hair. One coat nice and easy really quick too. Next I took some layer paint, some white scar and I wet this down with about equal part paint to equal part water and then I just gave this one coat over all the ice weapons, so the shield and the sword. And now this is going to be a little bit clear when it dries and give a nice base for the effect we're going to use for the ice weapons. Again, it's real quick and easy. I'm only looking for tabletop ready standard here, but this is a nice way of getting something that's pretty cool really quickly. So the same thing, one to one, one part water, one part paint, all over the sword. Then I took three parts contrast medium to one part a thematic blue contrast and then I'm going to go over all the areas we've painted with that white scar. Let the white scar completely dry first though and then give this one coat all over the shield there really working it into the different areas and then all over the sword too and I'm trying to get a little bit more paint into those rune marks so you can see I was a little bit heavier there and then just push and pull that paint around until you're happy where it's settled. Then it's three parts contrast medium to one part talisar blue next and then once that previous mix had dried I just go over and I dot around little bits of this paint hardly any on my brush here and that's just going to give a nice mix so you've got a little bit of a darker blue coming through and then that gives a real quick and easy ice effect and then I go over the same with the sword working it into the areas that I want it to be a little bit darker just being completely random with it but focusing on the runes a little bit just to make them a little bit bolder. Then when that dry I took some white 0.951 Vallejo and this dry brush I thought I'd try this one out from Games Workshop. Same thing work those bristles into the 
kitchen towel until most of the paint's come off. And now I'm going over the whole model because this is going to be the frosty effect that's really going to make it into a space wolf. So I'm going all over it, trying to pick out all those raised areas and edges and then going over the fur. Got to be careful with the fur because there's a lot of texture there. So it can take quite a lot of the white and I didn't want it to be too bright. So just being careful, picking out those areas that I think would be extra frosty, working into those claws and then the rounded areas and then really working on the shield here and the edges of it and any raised areas too. So this really does bring it to life and creates this theme right across the army and it's very quick and easy to do as well. It's easy to go over the top, so once you get to a certain stage, just stand back, take a look at it. You could always go back and do a bit more, so don't try and do it all in one go. And there we go, this He-Man the Space Wolf all finished, and I added a little axe as well, just to give him the full complement of weapons. I was really happy with how he turned out. I think using these quick, easy techniques, you can get a nice tabletop ready army ready in no time. And using these techniques really helped me to get those 3000 points done pretty fast. And I did the vehicles in a similar way as well as the models. So this is the kind of theme that I've gone with throughout the whole army. But the frost weapons, such a cool technique too, very easy to do. And I think the results are well worth those few steps you have to go through to get there. And the shield's really nice with that skull on there. Perfect for Castle Grey Skull. I think it really suits the model. And I just love the whole vibe of this model. It's one of my favourites from the whole army. And then I did the base um, separately and then glued him on. And I can show you exactly how to do that base in another video, which is already up on the channel if you'd like to take a look, which is my how to make icy frozen bases video. So that's on the channel already if you want to have a look. Again, nice, quick, easy techniques trying to get tabletop ready in a fast and efficient way. He-Man joins this full army of Space Wolves and I'll be doing a showcase of the whole army really soon. If you like this style of painting, I've done lots of other videos. I've done Aryak Rockfist. I've done Bjorn the Fell-Handed, so you can paint your uh, Dreadnoughts the same. I've done the Fenrisian Wolves, really quick and easy again. And also some Blackbirds, or, which are Aether Wings, that I'll be using as Wolves too. And I've also show you how I painted inside the Rhino, and the outside of the Rhino video is coming very soon. If you'd like to build your own He-Man Space Wolf, then he's from the Space Wolves Grey Hunters pack. And there's all the components in there that you need to put him together. And I'll put some links down below to Element Games, where you can get it for just over £27 at the moment. So you can save 15%. And Wayland Games have got it in stock, saving you 20% at 25.84 and also if you buy through those links i get a small commission so you also help to support the channel too so if you do that thanks so much i really appreciate it if you like the space wolves or any um, space marine army really then check out my 30 day challenge where i went through the planning exactly how to put together an army of 3000 points built it all, painted it, and I even built a junk model of the Fang to display the whole army in. So you can watch the whole behind the scenes series, which is 30 videos in total, and you can see exactly how I did it from start to finish, from having no models to ordering them, to getting them all built and put in the Fang. I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks so much for watching. Please like if you like it, subscribe for more videos like this, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'd like to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters who make these daily videos possible, and if you're interested in joining the community, it'd be awesome to see you there, and I'll put a link for that in the description down below. <laughs>